Man, all right. Woo! Full house today. Wow. Guys, it is such a privilege and an honor to be back here in a place that was so formative to who I am today, where I came out with uh, some incredible friendships and one that will uh, last until death do us part. Uh, I came out with some (laughs) incredible mentors who many of you get to experience on a regular day-to-day basis, and it is such a privilege and an honor for me to be back here. Thank you to the leadership. Thank you, Bob, and the whole chapel team. Uh, I'm excited to be here with you guys, and, uh, and as you guys know, it is no lie and no secret that Gordon brings some of the top speakers and some of the greatest people to come and share some theological deep wisdom with you guys, and, uh, and today you might have an opportunity to hear that. If you just go to youtube.com slash Gordon College, you will have so many opportunities to hear, uh, but, but as for me and myself, all I can offer is a little bit of a personal experience as someone who four years ago was sitting in your seats, had the same thoughts that you've had the same worries that were running through your mind, and the same drive and energy that you have to get wherever you're going, I've been there. And I'm excited because I think as I ask God, God, what is the thing that you want me to share this morning with this entire group, as I almost fall off the stage, uh, with this entire group, he just said, just talk about something that is incredibly relevant to Gordon. And so I might not hit on everything in the world, but I'm going to try to hit on something that hits home here. So would you pray with me as we start this off? Father, we thank you that you are an incredible God, that you are so big and so much deeper and wider than we could ever imagine. Um, God, you have brought us all here, whether we are visiting as Clarendon potential scholars or or it's our fourth year here and uh, we're just heading to where you have us next. Would you bless this time? And uh, it's in your name we pray. Amen. So would you read with me uh, Mark chapter 10, verses 17 to 22. It says, says this. I think I can put it up. Here we go. It says this. As Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came running to him, knelt down and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not murder, you must not commit adultery, you must not steal, you must not testify falsely, you must not cheat anyone, honor your father and mother. Teacher, the man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. There is still one thing you haven't done, he told him. Go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. And at this, the man's face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many great possessions. You ever uh, ever sit in Jenks or Cosk or in your room or somewhere with a big window? Uh, And if you don't know, it's just anywhere in a big window. And, and you look out the window, and you just see something majestic. I know that the sunsets here are beautiful, but Bill, can you actually come up here? I need, I need Bill's help for a second. Yeah, can we give it up for Bill real quick? Incredible. You ever, you ever see something incredible out the window? Not, not talking about a sunset, but I'm talking more something that looks like this. kind of something that I see and I have seen and I will admit and confess to you, this has been me 
at many times in my Gordon college life, especially when I would lose my longboard and I would look at the time and I would notice that I am so late for whatever is coming next that I just hear this background music. I'm like, I have to, I have to run. So not, not only is this me, I'm sure, I hope that, that some of you have had the privilege of experiencing this out the window, looking, zoning out from your homework and then looking over and seeing somebody just <laughs> gunning it for wherever they're going next. And, and, and here's the thing. I think that so many of us kind of live this lifestyle here at Gordon. Look at my calendar. I'm, I'm going to show you my calendar from 2016. Uh, this, is, this is what it looked like. I'm going zoom to zoom in a little bit. It looked like this. I had class at 9.10, and from 9.10 to 10.10 10, 10 was class. Right after class ended at 10.10, 10, the exact moment... <laughs> The exact moment when my class ended, I had a meeting with my boss. And so just imagine, I had to sprint down. If I had no longboard, I was parting the Red Sea of people going to, to Lane to have this meeting. Right after the meeting ended, I had five minutes to get to class. Right after class, I had work five minutes later. Right after, actually during my job somehow, I don't even know how this happened. <laughs> During my job, I had to run over to Beverly to meet with Guy Tim. Who is Guy Tim? Man, what is going on? This was literally exactly what my life kind of looked like. And I know for a fact that this is what your life looks like. I, don't even play with me. How many of you have a calendar that looks like this? Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you for being with me. This is something that looks like this, and maybe, maybe you, you aren't, you're not going to get caught dead running across campus if, if you have anything to do with it, but our life often looks like somebody is running to something. Now, where's Luke at? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a lot of friends come up here. Luke, can we give it up for Luke? This man, amazing, amazing. All right, Gordon, this is like painter's tape. Don't worry, it's not going to ruin your wall. Luke, can you hold this? Can you stick this over here? My question that I'm going to ask is why are we living like this? Why is it that we're always running? And here's what I think. I think that we're starting over here, and we believe in what we've learned from the Bible and from all the places that we've been. Where Jeremiah 29, 11, you know this by heart, for I know the plans that God has for you, plans to prosper you. And I'm sitting here like this, like, plans are over there. Plans, I'm going to run because my plans are out here, and this is where I'm putting my hope. I'm putting my hope in the plans that God has for me over here. I'm starting over there, and I'm standing over there, as a Gordon student, I'm living my life over here, but I know that God has things for me over there. I know that there are so many things that God has, has, has put in my life and gifts that he's given me, but they're over there. And so what I'm doing here as a Gordon student, what I'm doing here in my four years is I'm running. I am running to get there because there, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to grind, how I'm going to get there is what my life is going to look like because there is where God's purpose is for me. There is where all my hopes and dreams and desires stand. But I'm over here. I'm over here and, I, and I'm just looking over there grinding and running because my hope is there. And I'll admit that this is how I live my life at Gordon. So often I was just trying to run to get there because I believed the plans he has for me. But my head, those plans were always so distant. They're always so far away and so I've always just put my hope in what is over there. And, and, and here's what I think is so interesting. This really, in a scary way, to me, resembles what we see in the rich young ruler. Now, the rich young ruler has a lot of similarities to us. 
except for maybe the fact that he was rich. <laughs> and maybe that he was a ruler, except for all you guys who are in GCSA, but whatever. No offense, sorry, I went there. But this young man, he actually has more similarities to us than I think we even realize. He's young, but if you look and if you think back with me about what we just read, he asked Jesus, how do I get eternal life? And Jesus says, well, you know the commandments. And he says, yes, I've kept all of those. I've been to church. I go, I've been raised in this church environment, and I do all the right things, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm actually using my gifts to pursue what God has for me, and I'm trying to honor you with the things that you've given me, and I'm driving, and he's driven, and he's successful, and I see that in you guys. And I, see, I, I saw that in our class when we were graduating. We're driven, we're successful. For four years, we're driving, and we're going there. We're heading there. And that's what this man looks like, but also there's more to it. And I want you to notice this with me. Check this out. It says in verse 17, as Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came. You know, I, I, read, I read some some professional Bible readers, what they said about this, and they were talking about how, how this, yeah, yeah, I, I did biblical studies, I thought, that's what they taught me, uh, that this, this, this guy, he is running, and some say because there's a sense of urgency in him, and he's excited to go meet Jesus, but I read this one who said this, he said, this is not just this physical, uh, outward expression of what he's doing towards Jesus, but this is actually something representing his lifestyle. He's always running. He's driven. He's excited to be there. And, and, and this, this is dangerous. It's dangerous. And look at what he asks. He says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And I don't even know if this man really understands what he's asking because to him and maybe to many of us, including myself, when we think about eternal life, we think about like this big shiny gate up in heaven waiting for us once we pass away and go up there and we're going to live eternally with him. But listen to what Jesus says in John 17. He says that this is eternal life, that they know you, God, and they know the Son, Jesus Christ. And so to Jesus, this question is simply asking Jesus, how do I get to know you? And this isn't just like a knowing that I get to know you in my head and knowledge that I gain from my New Testament class with Dr. Hunt or my Old Testament class with Dr. Hildebrandt or whatever it is. This is a knowing that's like drop it like it's hot and run after Jesus know him. This is a knowing that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up whatever it is that I have, whether it be over there or over here, because I know him. This is the eternal life that Jesus is thinking about when he's thinking this. And you would think a rich, young ruler who has it all, he's got the wealth, he's got the influence, he's got whatever he wants at his fingertips, you wouldn't think that he needs anything else. What else could you need, man? You've got it all. But there must be something that he feels like is missing because he's coming and asking for more. What he's got, and, and he's, he's got what we're running after. <laughs> he's got what's over there that we want, but he's still coming and asking Jesus, Jesus, there's got to be something more. Listen to this, Jim Carrey one of the most successful actors. He's got so much influence, so much wealth. He says, this, hey, he says, I wish everybody could get rich and famous and get everything they ever dreamed of so that they can see that it's not the answer. It's a direct quote. What's over there, what well, we're running after, it's not the answer. So what are we missing what are we missing? Check, check this out. Let's keep reading. It's coming. Why do you call me good? Jesus asked. Only God is truly good. 
But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not false talk, testify falsely. You must not cheat anyone. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, the man replied, I'm, I've obeyed all of these commandments since I was young. Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. Now, we got to know, this man is playing. He is playing. He says, I've kept all of these since I was young. Boy, you haven't kept all of those since yesterday. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? But look at what Jesus does. He says, looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. He didn't feel that love for him because of his success. He didn't feel that love for him because he's over there. He felt it despite of his success. He felt it despite of him failing and lying to his face about it. Jesus loves this man, and it's not because of what he's been doing. But even, listen to this, even as a religious young man, this kid's been running. He said, I've been keeping all of these commands. I've been doing it all. I've been obeying my mama. I've been eating her food even when I don't like it. I've been doing everything that you've asked me to do. He's running. He's trying to be this really good, religious, 21-year-old, and he's driven to do what God is calling him to do. He's, he's running. He's running. And I love this next part. Jesus then says, there is still one thing you haven't done. He told him, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then, come follow me. And I actually was talking to my dad. My dad's here. He's awesome. He's incredible. So thankful for him. I was talking to my dad about this. My dad is probably like, the greatest preacher and man I have ever known, so you should get to know him afterwards. Uh, but I was talking to my dad about this, and he's probably read more books than I will ever think about in my entire life. So he knows so much, and when I asked him about this passage, he said, you know, there's, there's this author who I'm not as good as him, so I don't remember the author's name, but there's this author who talked about this passage, and he said that Jesus is looking at this man, and he's saying, this, this man does not have a possession problem, he has an obsession problem. Yeah, he's got a lot of things, but it's not the things that he has that are going to hold him back. It's this obsession that he has with the drive that he's going after. It's the obsession that he has with always succeeding, with always being ahead, with always getting the next thing and never being satisfied in what is here. He's running after the things that the world is telling him, this is success. This is what you can look like if you just keep following this road. He's got an obsession problem. I felt like I had an obsession problem while I was here. I was obsessed with running after the awards and the recognition and the whatever it might be. So I just kept running. But what are we chasing? What's over there? This man is chasing things. And look, look, this, this is probably one of the saddest parts, in my opinion, in the whole Bible. Because he's standing right before everything that he could ever hope for. And this is what it says. At this, the man's face fell. And he went away sad. For he had many possessions. He's standing right before all of the hope in the world. He's standing right here. Right next to Jesus. And he has the opportunity to have his hope be right here. Not all the way over there. But he's obsessed. He's obsessed with the drive. 
He's obsessed with the accomplishments. He's obsessed with what people think about him and the success and the wealth and everything that's coming that's over there. And so he's not willing to drop it. He's not willing to stop running because he just is obsessed. Guys, our hope is not over there. Our hope is right here. It starts here, and yes, it continues here, and it continues here, and it continues here, but let's not waste four years going over there when he's right here. Let's not waste our time running after things. Yes, these things are good, they're important, and we're supposed to accomplish, we're supposed to bring the kingdom of God in so many ways, but don't think that he's not over here with you the whole time. I have so many friends who graduated from here who have just been chasing and they said, once I get that job, once I graduate, once I get my LinkedIn 500 plus logo, then I will get it and I'll be good and then I'll start to pursue God. But listen, guess where they are now? They're still running and they haven't thought once about Jesus. Because they're obsessed, because I was obsessed, and because maybe some of us in this room are obsessed. And we think that hope is there and not here. But let let me tell you, hope is here. He's standing with us. He's waiting for us to open the door to talk to him, to have this conversation, this relationship, the knowing God of eternal life that doesn't just wait for us to get over there, but the knowing God that starts today, that starts here, not after we graduate, not after we've accomplished all the things, but it's here and it's now. And I, I challenge you, do not waste this time here. He is so present in our lives and he is so ready to give us the hope that we think is over there now hope is here and uh and most good preachers will just stop there but that's not me so i'm just gonna tell you one more thing because if we believe this if we believe that this hope is here, and some of you are living this way, you are believing that, no, Jesus is here, and I'm walking with him, and, and things are awesome. Let me challenge you in this one, one other way. Let me challenge you and tell you that if this hope is here, I know that your job is going to help you to, to preach the gospel and share it with your coworkers and go out in the mission field and, and do whatever it is that you're going to be doing. And you can share that gospel in the kingdom over there, but I'm going to challenge you, if you're over here and you're believing that hope is here, do me a favor. This room is packed. This college has so many who aren't in the place that you are. I have a couple minutes. I'm going to share the story. My senior year, I decided not to live with some of my best friends up in Tavilla or in Bromley or one of the apartments, I decided that I'm going to live in a freshman dorm with freshmen all around me. Why? Because I believed in this. I believe that hope is here and people don't know it. I, I wasn't an RA, I wasn't an RD, I wasn't any Rs. I was just Kika living in my dorm among freshmen. Because I wanted to share with them. I wanted to have an opportunity to say, hey, I might not have all the time in the world, but I'm with you every day and every night, and you can't get away from me. I'm going to walk into a room. And I'm going to say, what's up? How you doing? Have you been reading your Bible? Because this was a, a hope that I saw and I believed in, and I wanted to share it while I was here. There are so many students here who are going through so much. There's depression, there's brokenness, there's hurt, there's anxiety. And some of us, just, just, it just takes one conversation. And I believe that the Holy Spirit has empowered every single one of you to change lives 
on this campus. And one of Gordon's big three things is to elevate the contribution. And I believe that, yes, we can elevate the contribution of Gordon College out, out in the future, but we can elevate it here. <laughs> It can start here, and if it starts here, it will multiply in ways that we could never imagine. (laughs) Think about it. Think about the ways that if every single student here walked out, graduated, believing that hope is already here, and I'm not going to wait till I get there. Imagine us walking this entire way, believing that this hope is here and here and here, and everyone around me that I get in contact with is going to know about it, and I'm going to share with them, and it, nothing is going to stop me until I get to the end of my line. And I'm going to share the hope that is here. Not just when I'm over there this way. <laughs> But the whole time, I'm going to share about that hope that is here. Will you believe with me that hope is here? Will you live it out with me that hope is here on this campus and everywhere we go? It's not just over there. Believe it with me. Will you guys pray with me? God, we thank you that you are our hope. God, let us not be caught running and obsessed with the things that are over there and miss what's right here. God, do not let the the grind blind us to what's already here. You are an incredible hope to this world. You are an incredible hope to this campus. And there is nothing that can stop your name from coming out and, and, and touching the lives of hundreds and thousands around us. God, help us to hold on to that hope, believe in it, trust that you have a hope for humanity, and you want to use us to bring that hope to those around us. We love you. We pray for this campus. We pray for the leadership. God, would you have your presence and your spirit multiply on this campus in ways that that just break everything that could ever hold us back, Lord. We love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys are dismissed. Head to your class. Run over there. It's going to be awesome.